The CPS PC Cooler DT360 ARGB display features the usual microscived copper cold plate, high pressure 120mm fans and an all aluminium radiator. But this cooler also comes with a 3.4 inch detachable LCD screen that can potentially be attached magnetically to any metal part of the PC. But is the DT360 ARGB display just all about the looks? Or does it have the thermal performance to match? Well, let's stick this on our test system and find out. So this is the CPS PC Cooler DT360 ARGB display. You can pick up this cooler in the US now, priced at around 250 bucks. It's available in black or white, but at the time of filming this video, I couldn't find it available in the UK. So we're still waiting for a confirmation on whether this will actually land in the UK and how much the price will be. DT360 ARGB display features a detachable magnetic 3.4 inch IPS LCD screen with 480 by 480 resolution and 60 Hertz refresh rate that can display customizable themes and real time system information. It's equipped with a copper microscope cold plate with an all ceramic bearing pump solution. The included F7X120 fans feature a wireless modular connection for less cable clutter with 28 millimeter thickness for concentrated airflow and high static pressure and a 27 millimeter thick radiator with 14 water channels and high density fin array. It is compatible with all current Intel and AMD desktop platforms so that will include Intel LJ 1851, 1700, AMD AM4, AM5. Out of the box it comes pre-installed with the fans to the radiator so if you're running it in the top of the case there's nothing to do with the radiator just install it straight into the case and it'll be in the correct orientation. We'll start by looking at the radiator. So it is a pretty much standard 27 millimeter thick all aluminium radiator, but like a lot of aluminium radiators of this size that has 12 waterways, this is more condensed and has 14 waterways in total with a dense fin array. There is a nice satin finish to the radiator, very smooth and even, looks high quality, doesn't show fingerprints up too badly either. A lot of satin finish radiators do show fingerprints. There is a bit of detail on the finish, I don't know how well that comes across on the camera. There's like a triangular pattern at either end of the radiator and then a CPS logo in the middle. Overall dimensions of the radiator are 394 millimeters by 120 by 27 millimeter thickness. As I say, the fans come pre-installed to the radiator. Tubing is a rubber low evaporation tubing. It's 400 millimeter length and it's covered with a braided sleeving. At the radiator side, you can see the tubing is fixed. There's no rotation or movement in the tube in there. But at the CPU block, there are 90 degree rotary fittings. They are really stiff to move though. So you might wanna just work them a little before you install it into the system if you think you might need to adjust them once they are installed. They are quite stiff to move those, stiffer than most other AIO tubing. They also come with a couple of clips on the tubes there. So they're just plastic clips. They've got that same triangular pattern on one side and you can adjust those up and down the tubing depending on where you want them once it's installed. The block itself has a quite a nice premium aluminium cover with like a gunmetal finish and it also has this chrome effect trim around it. Inside the center there is a CPS logo that illuminates with RGB lighting but you do have this 3.4 inch IPS display that clips on top of that magnetically. The reason CPS has gone into so much detail with how this looks, you would think it's a bit pointless having the display on top, but this display can be detached as you can see, and it's magnetic, so you can potentially attach this to anything that is steel inside the PC case. So I guess that's why there is that CPS logo on there with the RGB and the chrome trim. It is a nice premium looking CPU block, and it's not too tall either. Even with the display on there, it's not too tall, not too imposing on the system. So if you like the subtle minimalist look, it shouldn't look too imposing, even with the CPU block 
and the LCD on top of it. At the base of the block, there is a copper micro skive cold plate compatible with all current Intel and AMD platforms. It doesn't come with any pre-applied thermal compound, but included in the box is some EX90 thermal compound. It's a decent sized tube with that. There should be enough in there for a couple of insulations. So if you upgrade your CPU in the future and you need to reinstall it, there should be enough thermal compound there. The pump features an all ceramic bearing setup and it has a speed of up to 2,600 RPM, but it is only voltage control. So it's a three pin header for the motherboard, not PWM control. The fans that come with the cooler are CPS PC cooler F7X120 fans. They come pre-installed to the radiator, which is a time saver. It can take quite a while screwing fans to the radiator so that does speed up the installation process and you can see they come all attached to each other so they clip together and they pass through the electronics for the speed control and the RGB lighting and that all just goes to a single cable with standard 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connections and standard 4 pin PWM headers same at the pump side that also uses standard 3 pin 5 volt ARGB but it's voltage control so it's a 3 pin connector in terms of the power. These are really nice looking fans. They have those two zones of RGB lighting. So there's an RGB ring around the outside of the fan blades and then a second RGB ring on the fan hub. It's quite subtle RGB, but it is nice and bright and it does look good once the fans are running. It's a bit different from the ones that just illuminate the whole blade. And to complement the neat and tidy aesthetic, it also comes with these plastic covers where the fans connect to each other and some rubbers that also cover up the screw mounting so it almost looks like it's one solid 360 millimeter block of fans rather than three individual 120s i quite like that look with 20 years of pc manufacturing experience cyberpower pc are the best in the business with the largest range of parts available in the uk our team of experienced builders will expertly build and test each system to be delivered to you the very next day check out cyberpowersystem.co.uk so that's a quick rundown of the main features of the cooler if you want to see a bit more information about the cooler, head over to kitguru.net where there will be a written review page for the PC Cooler DT360 ARGB display. Let's take a look now at the installation process, get this installed on our test system and have a look at the thermal performance. Included with the cooler is an upper mounting bracket for AMD installation, an upper mounting bracket for Intel installation, an Intel motherboard backplate, a set of Phillips head screws for mounting the radiator to the chassis, the 3.4 inch detachable DT LCD screen, a CPS, ARGB and PWM fan hub, an RGB and PWM motherboard sync cable, a USB Type-C to USB 2.0 motherboard header cable for connecting the LCD, and a tube of CPS EX90 thermal compound. First, attach the correct mounting bracket to the CPU block and depending on whether you're using Intel or AMD, there's a specific bracket for each. Our test system uses an AMD AM5 platform, so I've attached the AMD bracket and I'll show you the installation process for AMD sockets. Next, remove the stock AMD upper mounting brackets from the motherboard. The cooler doesn't come with thermal compound pre-installed, but there's a tube supplied with the cooler. So now is a good time to apply thermal compound to the CPU IHS. Next, lower the CPU block into position over over the CPU and tighten the four spring-loaded screws evenly and progressively in an X-shaped pattern for even contact. Then connect the fan power cable to the motherboard PWM header usually labeled CPU underscore fan. Connect the pump power cable to a motherboard header usually labeled AIO underscore pump or CPU underscore OPT. Now connect the pump female and fan male RGB connectors together then connect the other female end to a motherboard 3-pin 5-volt ARGB. GB header. Then for the LCD, connect the USB Type-C cable to the connector on the LCD housing and connect the other end of the cable to a USB motherboard header to complete the installation. The RGB is controlled via motherboard software, but you need to download the display configuration software from the CPS PC Cooler website. In there, you can adjust the image background and custom edit the information that is shown on the display with various sensor information and other options available as well as the option to upload a custom image to the display LCD. However, the software is quite poorly laid out with too many options and it can be quite confusing and annoying to use, which means it's a very time consuming job 
to customize the display. Let's start by looking at noise output as this gives us a good indication of performance based on noise. At 57 decibels, the CPS PC cooler DT360 ARGB display is a loud cooler, but the fans are running at very high speed. So this high noise output is to be expected, but you wouldn't want to run the cooler at this fan speed if you care about noise at all. With the fans running at max speed and the CPU at fixed frequency, the performance of the DT360 ARGB display is quite impressive at 58 degrees C over ambient which is only a couple of degrees off the best and equal in the performance of the likes of the Lian Li Hydra Shift 360 and Silverstone Ice Mist 420. With the CPU still at fixed frequency fan speed is reduced to hit the 40 decibels noise target. With the DT360 ARGB display we had to reduce the speed to 1770 RPM which is still quite high compared with a lot of other coolers. This drops the performance to mid tape and similar to the Deepcool Mystique 360 and the Be Quiet Silent Loop 3 420 at 64 degrees C over ambient, which again is only a few degrees C off the top coolers, so it's solid performance from the PC cooler AIO. In the PBO test, the important metric is the clock multiplier as the CPU auto adjusts frequency to meet a target temperature, so the temperature delta between coolers is close. Again, with fans set at maximum speed, the DT360 ARGB display is placed in mid tape with an average clock multiplier of 52.4 which means the CPU is running at 20 megahertz per core lower than the top coolers but this will be a minor performance drop and not really noticeable in real world scenarios so overall the thermal performance is good but it's very loud at maximum fan speed if you're looking for a new chair then definitely go and check out boolies.co.uk they offer a whole host of gaming and office chairs that come in a variety of different finishes and different colors so if all you care about is thermal performance, you will find the CPS PC cooler DT360 ARGB display a good choice in terms of thermal performance because at maximum fan speed, although it's extremely loud at 57 decibels, it is up there with some of the top coolers we've tested so far on this 9950X test system. However, reducing fan speed to 40 decibels, it does drop the performance slightly, but it is still in mid table in the chart. So it's only a few degrees off the very best coolers we've tested so far. However, as I say, noise output at maximum speed is very loud, but the fans are running at 3000 RPM, so this is to be expected. Installation process is very quick and simple. The fans come pre-installed to the radiator from the factory, and they're also connected to each other in terms of the electrical connections and cables. So there is only one cable at the end of the run that you have to connect up to the motherboard connections. So that means it looks quite neat, especially at the fans with only minimal cables there. There are extra cables at the CPU block and if you've got the display attached, that does add another cable to the CPU block, which will have to run up the motherboard and hide away somewhere. But overall, it is a very, quick and easy installation and it looks neat and tidy once it's installed. However, got some issues with the LCD display. I like the fact that you can unclip it or detach it from the CPU block and it can attach magnetically virtually to anywhere in the system that is uh, usable and you can see it from your side window. However, the display, it's quite dull. The colors aren't very vivid. It's quite dark and the software is really awkward to use. There's just way too many options and menus that you have to go through to customize the background and what's actually on the display in terms of information. It's a really awkward software to use. If you've got a short attention span, you'll find it really annoying very quickly. And I think the display in terms of the looks the vividness of the colors and the software there's room for improvement there for sure price $250 it's up there with some of the more expensive AIOs with LCD displays and to be fair there's a lot of LCD displays that look a lot better than this in terms of the image quality and are also a lot easier to configure with the software so for me the LCD display lets it down potentially if CPS PC cooler had a same version of this Without the LCD display that could be maybe a hundred or a hundred and twenty dollars cheaper, that's what I'd probably go for over this LCD model. So that's the CPS PC Cooler DT360 ARGB display. Let me know what you think of this cooler in the YouTube comment section. If you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed to Kit Guru, make sure you hit the subscribe button now. 
If you enjoy what we do here at Kit Guru and you want to help support us, you can always head over to the store and pick up some of our merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to our website. <laughs>